हेलो एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर अंशुल दिवाकर एंड टुडे आई एम कमिंग विद अ वेरी वेरी यूनिक थिंग दिस हैज बीन आस्क टू मी मल्टीपल टाइम्स इन द पास्ट एज वेल वेयर आई हैव जस्ट काइंड ऑफ रिटर्न डाउन व्हाट आई फील अबाउट द एकेडमिक्स इन रेसिडेंसी बट देयर वाज अ नीड फॉर एवरीवन टू नो एग्जैक्टली uh how and uh, uh what are the ways in which you have to approach the books uh, and this is a common query from uh, the residents everywhere so i thought i'll just quickly tell you my way which is little different from what routinely you are going to hear from your seniors or your from uh, from your uh, uh, senior residents or aps young aps who are more interested in teaching you and sometimes even the seniors in the department right so my perspective about uh academics is very different because i feel residency is the only time in your life uh when you are completely carefree because you are more or less not in charge of the patient you are there you are there to observe you are there to learn but in case anything happens the blame will never come on you and only and only it's the residency the three years of residency that you get this privilege apart from that anesthesia can be very very stressful because once you move into the zone of professional practice of anesthesia then every decision that you take it is going to come and be with you forever so this is the only time that you have to also enjoy your residency so you have to be in the theater you have to try lot of stuff you have to discuss lot and that is why uh, in traditional sense if somebody tells you that uh, you know we are going to only read books and we are only going to do this or we are only going to do that Uh, it is not something that i would recommend uh, because if you only be a part of the books and you only build a very good theory base then you are not you might not become a very good anesthetist because anesthesia is about uh, being on your tips so what i did did in my residency is what i am going to tell you i don't know what other people do there are a lot of people who start from first year and then they read all the standard textbooks but i have always found that my way of doing things was much more easier to be done and also it gave me an edge over uh, my batchmates and most of the people i knew because i had the best working knowledge of anesthesia you understand one there is theory and there are you know books and books and there are chapters and chapters written and one is working knowledge where a question is being asked to you and you know the right answer so i will dive down into how to approach books in residency in anesthesia before i move ahead let me some let me <clears throat> tell you some common myths that are associated with academics in post graduation what are the myths the myths start with i will read from first year and build concepts one by one so what we feel is that life is going to be ideal we are going to start from first year of post graduation and we are going to do one by one by one so first physiology then pharmacology then anesthesia machine then airways equipments then anesthetic management blah 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 and we will be in a state to do it all together one by one by one i will sit and read standard textbook completely cover to cover everybody wants to do that right this is common myth that we feel that miller's textbook of anesthesia barash morgan page 1 to page 2000 pura padhenge har panna padhenge underline karenge four three four highlighters use karenge and by the end of th- three years we will devour the book like anything i will read on my off day i have a friday call i'll do the call saturday i'll be post call i'll do the routine ot get free at 1 o'clock sleep till 5 o'clock and then go to the library and study for 4 5 hours and sunday i am completely free so i'm going to study from 9 am to 9 pm this is what we always believe i will sit and make notes of everything as i read and i am going to write them down i'm going to sit read and make notes of everything as i read i will start reading as soon as i get some time off from my duties and as i become a senior this is something that everybody thinks first year mein to it is impossible to study but yes from second year when juniors will come i don't have to go early and prepare the ot i just have to do informing then i can sit in the ot and read i can get pre early so i'll go to the library and read reading exam oriented books is not going to build concepts for me isn't it you all feel and we all judge these exam oriented books the books that are written specifically for the exams which are either in the question answer pattern or they are very specific related to what is being commonly asked in the exam and i need pen paper and printed books to start reading right this is also sir i have just joined first year they have not given me a good hostel i don't have uh, places place to keep the books so i have not bought any book 
but as soon as i buy a book then i am going to start reading these are the common myths and there might be few else that you can share with me but these are the common myths that come along with academics in post graduation so what i am going to first do is i am going to demystify them for you i am going to break these myths for you and this is the most important part for your academics books content everything is out there with you you have the books you have your seniors you have me you have whatsapp groups you have telegram channels you have hundreds of sources we live in a world of plenty there is no problem nobody is limited to just you know you and your department you have a global approach you go to youtube there are hundreds of video of teaching uh, and uh, teaching in anesthesia you have my videos you have so many different teachers trying to teach you so many things and yet we lack big time in terms of academics the problem is not that we don't have the resources the problem is we are held back by our own thinking our own thought process our own biases so i am going to debunk these myths by for you one by one what is your first myth i will start from first year and build concepts one by one see the thing is in an ideal world yes you join the department you work during the day you go relax in the evening in the night you sit and study something again go back but reality is away from it first year can be difficult both physically as well as emotionally and mentally because you have joined the department for the first time your first time come to a professional world where you have to reach a place every day at 7 7:30 there is a senior junior relationship there are so many things that you know don't know about it so remember reading is a habit that usually develops when you start thinking and that happens late in first year pg it never really starts with the first day first 3 4 months you don't even expect that you are going to sit and study anything you might be just able to understand what we are doing so developing a routine is what happens in the first 6 months of residency and not actual study because actual study takes some time for you to think ki, okay what is happening once you go through that stage of uh, you know working at a subconscious level that every day i have to go and i have to prepare this ot and i have to do this i have to do that after that you start thinking about the cases second is i will sit and read standard textbooks completely cover to cover see that is a dream by 99% of the students only 1% are able to do it best way is to pick up a small topic and complete it from the easiest available source don't underestimate the importance of doing small tasks don't underestimate the importance of doing small tasks you might think that somebody asked me a question on respiratory physiology so i'm going to open miller's textbook of anesthesia and read entire respiratory physiology understand it make some sense remember it and then go next day and give it to my consultant who has asked me never going to happen what is going to happen is that if they have asked you a question of say what happens to the frc under muscle relaxation you immediately go google it google it up exact the same words relationship of frc with muscle relaxant there will be a statpel article that will come or a ncpa article or a ij article you directly go to that page where that is being discussed there will be three points written what happens to the frc when you are supine what happens to the muscle relaxation the splinting action of the diaphragm the uh, abdomen it goes into relaxation and you know the right answer sometimes doing this becomes more important because you can't always expect that you will sit read all the textbooks and then only go forward i will read on my off day between 9 am to 9 pm usually whenever you think like this your first year goes your second year goes your third year goes when you finally get a preparation leave that is the time when you sit and study for 9 10 hours normally in residency it doesn't happen it should not happen residency comes once once you are done with your duties you should spend some time with yourself you should go out that is the only time when you start earning some money so you should go shops little bit so what is important is while we are working during the entire day what if we find 10 15 minutes of time during the day when we are sitting on a case or we are having lunch or it's a evening snack time or you have been given a break between two cases you know the next case has not been wheeled in and there is a half an hour gap because a surgeon is not available and this is the time when you really think and you start reading so reading develop as a habit and don't think ki you will be able to do 10 hours of reading what you should target is whatever case you are sitting in whatever thing you are doing just focus on that thing rather than thinking i am going to read ecmo first read the types of iv line the basics the things that you are doing every day of entirety of anesthesia you practice about 40 to 50% 40 to 50% remains either untouched or you rarely practice 
if you start developing a habit of doing what you do reading what you do every single day then by the end of your second year you will be done with 50% of anesthesia what remains 50% is what you have to do in the third year when you become little senior and you get more time you get preparation leaves so see the power of small targets 50% of anesthesia can be done sitting in the theater using your phone and rest of it can be done from textbooks i will sit make notes everything step by step start reading first and then think of making notes first read the topic read it multiple times read it from different sources read it from articles try to understand grasp remember yes when you reach your second year late second year and third year that is the time when you start making notes i'll start reading as soon as i get some time of duty is the perfect time never comes remember today is the best day to start today this case this patient this is the best time to start exam oriented books are not going to build any concept see books are books knowledge is knowledge concepts come from understanding and not from books you might feel that miller's textbook of anesthesia might give you more concepts than say tata arc no ultimately the teachers who have written tata arc have read all the books and then written the arc for you so how come they can't impart concepts in you concepts come from understanding and understanding takes time and time is what you need to give over a period of 3 years so you can't expect that you will open respiratory physiology and in one go you are going to remember everything and understand everything most of the time in a branch in a subject like anesthesia you do something you make a mistake and then you understand the physiology the first time you give spinal you make the patient supine and the pp drops and the patient starts vomiting that is when you understand the concept of hypotension induced nausea vomiting because of cerebral hypoperfusion otherwise i might be teaching you 100 times that the first manifestation clinical manifestation of spinal induced hypotension is nausea and vomiting you might be never able to remember but once you see that in your patient you will always remember it i need pen paper and printed books dude we are living in 21st century we don't need these things to start studying the best way to start studying is to use your phone not even tab don't think you okay sir has said now tomorrow i'm going to go buy a tab come and then start studying no your phone it's all everybody has a 5.5 6.5 7.5 inch screen and all the articles you keep looking at your phone why do you think instagram is so addictive because you spend a lot of time on it so rather than spending time on instagram spend time on youtube spend time on dams and medicos app spend time on pdf and use your phone as the most important resource to read okay all right so this is what i wanted to tell you these are the common myths that you have created in your mind and everybody must be having one or the other of these myths idea is to demystify these things and to have a proper approach now the approach is very simple and this is my approach to methods of study you divide your residency into three phases first year second year and third year and every year needs to have some importance every year will have one value it will have something that you have to do you cannot expect that you will read entire anesthesia in first year you can't expect that you will do what first year needs to be done in third year so let's start with the basics first year the idea is to read what you do read what you are doing what you do every day you prepare ots you give spinals you handle all the drugs you handle all the stock so you read what you are doing you read drugs you read machines airways difficult intubation instruments everything that you are using every day that you are touching nobody is asking you how to manage a patient with chronic renal failure for av fistula nobody is asking you to manage a old age patient for femur nobody is asking you fat embolism nobody expects you to do these things what is expected of you in first year is that whatever you are doing you kind of read about it and you you are you should be in a state to tell about it second prepare well for seminar now this is the part that i really don't understand and this is something that matlab it it i know it is difficult and i know the residency takes away a lot from you but remember the seminars are meant to make you understand that topic what we do instead is we just ask do you have this ppt do you have that ppt and we just copy paste it from slide share or someone or there is a huge database that has been created by a lot of people and we just copy paste it and we go and we blurt it out rather than that take that opportunity to read that topic trust me if you read a topic and give a seminar that topic is done and dusted 
because the people who are sitting in your seminar are the exact same teachers who are going to ask questions in the final exam right these are the professors who either go as external or they become your internal so whatever questions they are asking that time are the exact questions that are going to be asked to you in the your final exam so why not prepare it then and there if you get say four seminars in a year the four topics are done i am not even telling you to remember the seminars that are made by anyone else you just make sure that whatever topic of seminar is being given to you at least you read that topic from best books and you prepare your own seminars be it a vague seminar it might not have lot of pictures it might not have lot of animation but what it should have have is it should have your understanding you should remember what you have written in that seminar okay ask these questions to everything that you do that is the best way of learning why are we doing something what are we doing when are we doing where are we doing which thing are we using try to understand what i am trying to tell you you went into the theater it was an emergency duty there was an emergency cesarean section you asked the indication they said severe pih the bp is 180 100 the fetal heart rate is dropping and on scan there is a reversal flow to the baby so the baby is in stress maybe there is a meconium strain liker and that is why there is an emergency lscs now this is a perfect opportunity for you to learn management of emergency lscs for a patient with severe pih which is an exam question for you so you ask what should we do should we give spinal or ga why spinal why ga why should we give anesthesia whether we are giving anesthesia for normal delivery liver analgesia or we are giving it for lscs when should we give certain drugs what is the indication of giving iv levetiracetam what is the indication of giving oral levetiracetam what are the second line third line antihypertensives what is the role of giving iv magnesium sulfate where are we doing it are we managing the patient preoperatively intraoperatively postoperatively and which things do we use what are the drugs that we should use what are the airway equipments we should use so once you start doing this thing automatically what is going to happen is that that topic that you are doing while you are doing that one one and a half hour case all these things will be done by you and trust me when you practice anesthesia whatever you are practicing is exactly what you are going to go and write in the exam why do you think that what you practice and what you write in the exam needs to be two different things no you are practicing excellent anesthesia your patients are coming to your theater they are going out alive they don't have pain you give them adequate anesthesia so whatever you are doing is right and that is exactly what examiner is asking you so if you get into the habit of asking these questions every time every time you do a case a long case gets prepared second year you start by analyzing your exam you start by analyzing your exam take out 5 years of theory paper and start scanning them try to understand what is the pulse of the exam because sometimes exam asks you different things than what you practice every day so you need to write down and you know your seniors must have done that hard work when i was doing my residency there was somebody who wrote down all the question system wise with the dates with that that that, that, that were being asked so it usually gets passed on to us in dnb also a lot of people have done that thing so all you need to do is go and look at last 5 years of paper and start from your favorite topic now problem is we think we'll do the difficult thing first now difficult is something that is boring for us for an example anesthesia machine physics in uh, anesthesia airway management different airway equipments uh, super speciality topics like cardiac neuro uh, ecmo bypass aorto uh, aorto venous fistula all these things are very difficult what we think is second year we have lot of time let's do difficult thing no you should not do difficult thing what you should do is you should always start with something that you like you should start with local anesthetics you should start with spinal epidural you should start with subclavian perivascular block these are the things that you do every day start reading from there so you will develop an interest in the subject and once you develop an interest in the subject you would want to read more so try to use your own dopamine to help you then pick up an easy book now this is what i did in my residency rather than going for miller's textbook of anesthesia my go to textbook has always been morgan why morgan is crisp four pages the topic is done it gives you the same information that miller's gives you but it removes all the clutter from the miller and gives you distilled information always start with something that has less bulk and crisp content and start writing notes second year is the time when you start writing note whether it is vague note with not with good handwriting one color pen it's okay start writing everything that you are doing 
third year is when you should be very focused now since you have already seen on the all the papers in the second year you have a very good idea so you do things system wise start early don't think third year abhi aaya hai let's do thesis first all that because in the end two months are going to go into your thesis so you start early as soon as you become a third year start reading start making complete notes of everything that you are reading focus more on exam oriented books now that is not the time to open miller's textbook of anesthesia morgan it is the time to first complete 70% of everything so that you are pass and then only go into the standard textbook these are the two most important things you learn the most by teaching so when you are a third year don't become a khadus third year don't become an arrogant third year rather take that opportunity pick up a first year ask them the question and if they are not able to answer rather than ridiculing them and telling them you start revising your own thing start answering them then they will ask you ridiculously easy questions whose answer you will not know and then you will have to say some bahana you have to go back open the book and then read and tell them and then you will realize okay i was becoming over smart that i know everything but i didn't know half of the things that he asked me so the easiest way to remember something prepare something is by asking by teaching it to someone and make study groups third year second year mil jao usually diploma second year is exam going with third year md i was a diploma second year i went to exam with md md people i started mixing with them even on call days and we started discussing together and studying together and that is how it becomes very very easy now coming to the point how to use your resources so there are three types of resources you have the holy grail you have the standard textbooks that we always buy we rarely read then you have exam oriented books that we buy and we read and you have something that i have given you in the last one year that is a mix of everything so let's start with standard textbook we know the name holy grail is millers everybody talks about millers but frankly you read millers only when you become an sr rarely during your residency you are able to finish any part of the miller then you have barash morgan is my personal favorite no biases here i have read morgan cover to cover at least 3 times and i have realized everything that you need in life in anesthesia is given in morgan in most concise and crisp manner then you have stolting coexisting which is a wonderful book but only for few systems few systems are very detailed and we never get time to complete them then for machines and instruments you have bahati and dosh most of you guys these re- these days read bahati which is an extensively good book and then for critical care you have multiple textbooks but what is being done is because we don't really do too much of critical care in anesthesia residency so we try to pick up something and most of the time we end up doing some notes like my notes or the notes given by your seniors and you know some articles but you have standard textbook in the form of oxford handbook paul marino chang and pilbeams are very good for mechanical ventilation these are standard textbooks i have already told you the road map standard textbook should be done in second year so you start with them i'm not saying you should not do it remember and this is a advice what i am trying to tell you is i am trying to give you the truer picture the clear picture i am not dissociating you dissociating you from reading standard textbooks if you are able to read standard textbooks that is the best thing that you can do that is the best thing that you can do but we also know the reality but it is very very difficult to read a standard textbook i'll i'll give you i'll give you an example so this is miller's textbook of anesthesia right this is miller's textbook of anesthesia now see these are the chapters in miller's textbook of anesthesia let's pick up a easy chapter let's say start with uh, intravenous anesthetics right a very common question intravenous anesthetics chapter number 23 chapter 23 now look the summary is one page one and a half page that has written so much and if you start with propofol see i have marked these and for every page that you are reading say it's a complete page and only such only 10% of what is written in a page is relevant see this entire page can you see this entire page this entire page has so much written which takes lot of time by the way but only two lines are important only two lines are important which we can remember and which is relevant for the exam same you go to pharmacodynamics there so much written but the relevant portions are hardly 20 30% 
This is the problem that happens with standard textbook of anesthesia. You want to see another standard textbook, Morgan. Now the same thing in Morgan. See. Same thing in Morgan. See, propofol. It started here, half page. One page mein pura pharmacokinetics, half of pharmacodynamics is done. Last page finish. One and a half pages, maximum two pages, you are done with propofol. Dekh rahe the, Miller mein propofol chale hi ja tha. This is the difference. Both are standard textbook. Both will have the required information. But it is only when you do a book that is doable is that when you start making some sense. Right? So you do it from second year. You try to cover as many topics as possible. But again, you will have to be very, very crisp. You have to start reading it fast. Fast reading is something that you should know. Then the second thing is holy, the uh, exam oriented books. And for me, the holy grail of exam oriented book is Anesthesia Review Course by Tata, which is made by one of the best teachers in India. And the content that is given here is one of the best. The content that is given here is one of the best. See, if I tell you, if you see, this is Tata ARC. Now you pick up any chapter. Suppose you pick up COPD. Now see how they have described COPD. They have given you a case. So that takes care of your case presentation for your final exam. Then it is a question answer based uh, book. So what is COPD? How do you diagnose mechanisms? How do you differentiate between different types of uh, obstructive lung diseases? What is pyrometric classification? You have PFT, which is a very common question being asked. Then you have what are the effects of smoking? So it has integrated a lot of things. Otherwise, effect of smoking will be in preoperative assessment in your Miller's textbook of anesthesia. But here they have integrated everything and you can see everything is written in such a crisp and concise manner. I have never found a more, uh, what you can say, cost efficient book with minimum words. It has tried to discuss maximum number of questions. If you can read Tata ARC two, three times, I don't think there is an exam in this world that is going to be difficult for you. Okay. Then you have Yao. Some people like Yao. Yao is more extensive. It has more number of chapters. It covers more things. Then there is a very beautiful book called as Kaushik Jyotinath. He is a very, very wonderful anesthetist. But what he has done is he has taken away your problem. He has used a standard textbook like Miller. But he has done, he has copy pasted everything. But if you know how to use Kaushik Jyotinath, it becomes a very good source, especially for DNB. Especially for DNB. Because DNB asks extensive topics which are not always covered by Tata ARC. So Kaushik Jyotinath is a must have. But how to use it? Use it in your third year. Use it when you are really into the exam, when you have an understanding of almost everything in anesthesia, but you want everything short, short, and you try to make more sense of it. So rather than thinking of mugging up Kaushik Jyotinath, try to make the exact sense that Kaushik Jyotinath is making for you. It has divided the topics and it has described the topics in very calculated manner. It has given a lot of headings. Even if you remember the headings, you will be able to make a lot of things in the exam and race. I mean, race is, I have attended race and race is something which just takes your breath away, isn't it? Race is something, okay, I don't have it right now. But race is something that can just take your breath away. Every single year, they have worked so hard. They work on the clinical skills. They work on clinical physiology. They work on drug. There is a pro-con session. It's an amazing source. Only problem is we don't get enough time to do race. But if you see last four, five years of race, then a lot of questions from your theory and practical can be done by race. And <coughs> crisp content, ATOTW, Anesthesia Tutorial of the Week. Now look at this. This is an example of how beautiful this is. Very commonly asked question, and then recovery after surgery, ERAS. It gives you two, three MCQs. It gives you a brief understanding of the topic. <coughs> And it gives you guidelines. It gives you everything in less than 10 pages. See, you have nine pages. You can sit in the theater when somebody has asked you ERAS and you can finish. Otherwise, there are books written on ERAS. You know, there are books written on ERAS. And this is what you want to do yourself, which I'm pretty okay with. If anybody is motivated enough, if anybody is resourceful enough, if anybody is uh, 
has so much of time then this is the ideal way of approaching things but what i have done is i have taken your problem and i have taken my expertise and i have combined the two your problem is finding the source sitting with the source reading the source remembering the source writing the source and i did all of that for you and i created this master class for you now this master class has my sessions where i'm going to just like this teach you every bit of it i will give you my notes i will explain you the concepts and i will clear all your doubts so i am going to take lot of your effort and i am going to make it mine so this is a example of how i do things i take pen and paper i read four or five standard textbook four or five articles i make the best notes out of it and i teach you along with that i make you write with me so what i am trying to do is i am trying to take all the problems that you have in your residency and i am taking that and making that my problem and i am giving you the solution this is the beauty of my course so if you want you can check out my course there are a lot of students who have been a part of this course and which who are attending it and everybody is finding them amazing how to use any source now the question will be said the question was ki aap karna kaise how to use a source so start by identifying the problem problem is the problem in hand the clinical problem and then apply it in your daily practice so for an example you want to read respiratory system so start by identifying the problem what is the most common problem that we get we get reactive airway disease we get smokers we get copd and then whenever you do a psc of a copd patient or a smoker or an asthmatic patient then you start thinking about all those things wait give 10 minutes extra to that patient and start thinking about all these things discuss with friends and juniors i am telling you this is the single most most important differentiating feature between you and somebody who doesn't discuss if you discuss you remember more because common things come out of your discussion repeat multiple times don't think if you are going to read a topic once it is going to make any sense or you are going to remember any part of it you have to read things multiple times and that is why i insist on short and crisp sources like race and ato tw you can read a topic like eras five times in uh in in a span of 2 3 months every time somebody ask you eras you go you open that article you read it in 15 to 20 minutes nine pages is like 15 minutes of job and you will be done with it so you have to repeat it multiple times focus on quick reading rather than exhaustive research which is a common problem with us what we think is ek line se chalu karenge sara book padhenge sara textbook padhenge sab padhenge and in that we get bored and we leave it and we never really go back and read it. rather that chris chota chota book padho multiple bar padho and try to read everything fast don't try to finish everything in one go take an interesting approach like for an example effect of muscle relaxants on frc so don't try and go into the frc physiology of frc methods of uh, measuring frc then factors affecting frc and then looking at age the physiological status the position and then go to pharmacology induction agent inhalational agent muscle by that time you will be bored if your question is what is the effect of muscle relaxants on frc directly go on google type effect of muscle relaxants on frc read muscle relaxants on frc know that topic that is how you have to do it and be confident of what you read see if you read read something apply it daily and talk about it like for an example yesterday you did a uh, say yesterday you read about let's say role of chest uh, role of uh, cervical spine x ray in identifying difficult airway if you read it yesterday today you tell it to somebody and you confident ki ha maine dekho iska lateral x ray liya maine c1 c2 ka gap dekha maine mandible se c1 ka distance dekha that tells me about the submandibular space that tells me about the mobility of the joint that tells me about the uh, presence of ankylosing spondylitis be confident about what you are doing and talk about it these are my pearls of wisdom for you i have tried to not give you a a what you can say i don't want to spoon spoon feed you everything ki is book se ye pad lo is book se ye pad lo i know lot of you are coming for this uh, lecture and you are thinking ki main isse ye pad lunga isse ye pad lunga no i am not trying to spoon feed you i am trying to develop a system where even if you want to pursue higher education and you become an sr and there also you are busy or you are private to practicing anesthetist and you want to read for frca or edac or something like that you are still able to do it without putting lot of effort if you integrate the system of reading what you are doing and doing what you are reading this is my whole idea and before i finish i am going to give you the all in one source that is the resident master class by me 
and why am i telling you this thing is because all the things are good in theory everything that i have told you is an ideal way of approaching things not everybody is able to do it if you are not able to do it i am here to help you i have started last year this resident course and we started with the most common problem i identified the problem the problem was we were in the ot every time but we were not really knowing about machines ventilators airway assessment airway management difficult airway algorithm so the first module i made was on this then i took a feedback and everybody wanted some portion of critical care so we did critical care and now we are doing pharmacology which is again very very essential very very core to our existence right very essential and very core to our existence so these are the courses that i am offering you they are very well curated i give you all the notes there is a annotated pdf my lectures are very short very crisp i write with you so you can write with me so you can go to dam c medicos uh, app you can check out there are certain free videos there are certain videos on our youtube channel as well which is dam c medicos youtube channel and for anything else you can always contact me you don't necessarily have to think about uh, opting for a course to reach out to me i am always there to help you you can whatsapp me on this number you can always follow my page where i put all the updates i put some content as well i'm going to increase the amount of content you can always mail me for details and i'm always available with you for all these sources remember i am not somebody who is going to just leave you hanging dry i'm going to be with you in your residency we are going to have lot of discussions recently we have started case based discussions on our whatsapp group which is the group exclusively for the residents of my master class so whatever cases i am doing i am trying to imbibe this habit of whatever i am doing i post it on that group and then we have a hearty discussion and i tell and there are certain students who are really very interested so they write the long question based on that particular topic and we are done with that in a day or two so i am trying to make a concise and a very very conceptual understanding of everything so i hope you like this video you can contact me for your further queries and we can have a very situation specific discussion about your academics so all the very best to you and i hope you enjoyed the session please comment on the video if you want to ask something and if you like please uh, do share this video thank you so much